Happy Cinco de Mayo from a flat earth. Is it different on a flat earth to have Cinco de Mayo? Yeah, maybe. Certainly is more fun to not be living in a deception. We're still here at Comic Con 2017 in Minneapolis at the Minneapolis Convention Center. For our last segment, we're going to see who we can catch coming out of any of these doors. We might go back to that corner we were at at the very beginning of the broadcast and see who we can run into. I feel refreshed. I had some water. had a Southwest Chipotle wrap. You know, I figured I'd get Southwest Chipotle wrap since it was Cinco de Mayo. Makes sense, right? So, we still got our signage here. The signage is science and science fiction are essentially the same thing. That's by Bill Shatner. And then we have Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is not a true portrayal of space. Outer space is fake. Just hit them with that. Let everybody know that I'm tired of this deception. I'm tired of being lied to. I'm tired of my fellow Americans and human beings living in a lie and a deception. And so we just, uh, we're doing a little flat earth evangelism. To let everybody know that... How you guys doing? I'm terrific. You know that everything that NASA gives us is CGI, sir? It's all fake and we did not land on the moon. It's not possible because it's just a light in the sky. It's not made of cheese either. What a big fraud that was, huh? And they told us the moon was made of cheese to promote dairy. <clears throat> so I don't know if you're a vegan or if you've ever explored veganism or that type of lifestyle, but you should explore it, have an open mind, and understand the agenda of the establishment and promoting beef and dairy and what it does to the human body. How you doing? How you guys doing? Good, good. Going to Comic-Con? Yep. Right on. Can you, uh, I'm trying to, I'm just asking people a question, doing kind of a social experiment, so I can go home. Nobody can answer this question for me. Um, not using NASA or Hollywood, can you prove to me that we live on a spinning ball? Uh, I'm going to keep walking. Yeah. I know it's new information, but space is fake and NASA is a fraud and it's all CGI. Please wake up. Still a beautiful day. We're We're looking at about 25 degrees, light breeze. I watched a lot of people conversate about comic books. I was able to get into a exhibit hall and sit down. The best thing to do is just act like you own the place. And if you get kicked out, then you get kicked out, but you know, if you act like you belong there, nobody's going to tell you to leave. You know, if you, if you want to crash a party or anything like that, just walk in there, start giving people a high five. You know, mistake somebody's name for John or Jill. How you guys doing? Good. Did you go to Comic-Con? Yeah. You did? Right on. What was your best exhibit that you experienced? I don't know exactly what it was called, but the one 
call it swords. Oh, okay. Life-sized swords. You like Star Trek and Star Wars and all that, too? Yeah. Yeah? Did you know that that's not real? You cannot travel to Mars and the moon. It's not real. Stop lying to me. I'm not lying to you. I'm sorry. Hold on. Yep, NASA's a fraud. And it's all CGI. Everything they give us about space is CGI. Ruin that kid's life, but it's better now than later. <clears throat> the truth is hate speech for people who hate the truth. But that's what I'm here to do. I can't I can't worry about people's feelings <clears throat> being hurt. Santa Claus isn't real, okay? Sooner that you can resolve that issue, sooner you can move on. How are you guys doing? Good, terrific, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> so again, people can come down to my state capitol and propagate a lie of scientism and try to blend real science with science fiction, hold Bill Nye signs, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and promote that agenda, but for me to do this, people ridicule me, right? It's just unacceptable. I'm not going to take it anymore, and I hope that someday, I hope I'm here to watch the fall of NASA, but it's just a, this is a, a tough hill to climb on a flat earth. That hill can still be on a flat earth. We've got these guys coming. So if you want to come to my city and you want to promote scientism, How you gentlemen doing? Good. Good, good. Is there a way that you can uh, cite not using NASA or Hollywood that we live on a spinning ball hurtling the miles of, through space? I'm sorry, what? Is there a way that you can prove to me we live on a spinning ball not citing NASA or Hollywood? We don't live on a spinning ball, we live on a giant space turtle. No, we don't, sir. NASA's not real, man, in CGI. You live in a false reality of space being real and it's not true, man. Wake up, please. Yep. Come on over, man. Yep. But you walk away and you wouldn't want to hear it, man. See, I, I, I was going to tell you, but you, you're afraid because it will destroy your illusion. That is the general consensus of most people. When you say flat earth, they think that we are on a turtle shell floating through space. And that's controlled opposition. You know, that we'll fall over the edge. We can't live on a flat earth because of gravity and edge and we'll fall off. That's the establishment using mind control. And once you hear that, <clears throat> over and over as a young child for somebody like me to tell you the truth just like Bill Shatner who tells you the truth that science and science fiction are essentially the same thing you don't want to hear it and you know what everybody in their time you gotta remember that guys and gals Everybody in their time, okay? We can't force anything. It's just like me if I was out here promoting the Bible and Jesus Christ, right? Like, I can do that all day. You know? Yeah, that's a productive 
thing to do, and, and we are called to do that as Christians, but you can't force people, you know, into that. And science is a belief system. Gravity is their God. Science books are their Bible. And people that they have on mainstream, like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye, are their prophets. And people who do believe in science can't put that together. They can't separate religion and faith from science. Like, they, they, they think that they're right because it's science. And people who believe in God and Jesus Christ are deceived. How you guys doing? Good, man. Good, man. What, what's that about? You got a minute? Yeah, let me hear it. Yeah. Without using NASA or Hollywood, can you prove to me we live on a spinning ball in space? What's that? So I don't think I could, no. No, most people can't because all the images that NASA gives us are CGI. Did you know that? Yeah, can I, uh, can I interest you in something just to kind of help educate you? Thanks, man. It's my YouTube channel. Awesome. Check it out. Yeah, just have an open mind, man. Cool. Yeah, have a good weekend. Thanks. Most people can't do that. Most people cannot. <clears throat> Gentlemen, how you doing? Good, good. Yeah. Just uh, Google image satellites in space. They're all CGI, okay, man? Satellites aren't real. Connect the dots and wake up, please. I don't know, maybe I'm doing this because something is going to happen soon. I'm not a prophet or anything, but I'm not trying to fearmonger the convention that's going to happen for Flat Earth in the middle of November. I don't, I don't want any ill will there. You know, I want to lay a foundation. I don't want anything bad to happen. Of course, I don't. But, there's a lot of flat earthers that are going to be there. A lot of people who are, you know, your quote celebrity flat earthers who run channels and have a lot of subscribers. They're all going to be, con you know, put into one location. Just saying. You know, when you're, when you're hanging out with you know, you're some friends or whatever, and you have like a purse, <clears throat> you have money, you have your keys. Can I suggest that if you do have a purse or like a wallet or something, don't put, you know what I'm saying, don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Because you never know if you might lose your purse, then there goes all your money and your keys, right? You know, keep your money and your keys on you, and then put the things that aren't really necessary in your purse. You know, don't don't put everything that is important in one spot. That's just tactical. You know what I mean? So, I just, I don't know. I hope it goes off well. I hope there's a lot of people who are open-minded who go and they, and they see truth revealed on Flat Earth. But to have everybody like that all in one spot, and that's a huge movement that we have right now. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Just saying. Just t talking out loud. You know. Hey, ladies. How'd y'all do? Oh. Oh. I see. Well, space isn't real, okay? Outer space isn't real and NASA's a fraud. And so I don't know, that's just my my thought when I first heard about it. It's not like I, I thought it was a good idea. I mean I think that, that is it is a good idea to be able to get together and 
you know, like they did for the March for Fake Science here in St. Paul. You know, there were 10,000 like-minded scientisms who believed the religion of science and space and global warming. But that's what the establishment wants. The establishment wants to promote that idea. And so, I think that, you know, an overwhelming consensus is going to start flooding the earth here pretty soon, where what I'm doing might become more popular, more people will become open online to go into Google Hangouts because they're researching stuff, and I encourage people to check Google Hangouts out also. Uh, Brother Sanchez has some interesting information. I don't agree with everything that he says, but his his uh, hangouts are entertaining and they are thought-provoking. How you guys doing? Good. Good, good. What's that, bud? Uh, it's a cage. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Without using NASA or Hollywood, can you prove to me that we live on a spinning ball in space, please, so I can go home? Yeah, I didn't say anything about Flat Earth, man. I'm just saying that NASA gives us CGI. Space is not real. And if Flat Earth leads you to that point, man, then that's up to you, but you gotta wake up. You've been exposed as a good Google Hangout. Check him out. Regularly, they do eight hour Google Hangouts. So there's a lot of information, a lot of like-minded people, a lot of people who come in with genuine interest, who are Globies, other trolls. And they do a good job of, of allowing people to speak. You know, it's a, it's a good panel. It's a good opportunity. A lot of times Brother Sanchez is on there. Flat Out Elected also has a good Google Hangout, so check that out. Patricia Steer, she also does uh, guest intros, so check her out. And also Mark Sargent. So there's a lot of availability, you know, just YouTube, Flat Earth Live, you know, uh, live chat, Google Hangout or something like that on YouTube, you'll find plenty of channels who will give you different viewpoints about our reality that we live in. You know? Like I said, I don't agree with everything that's being done and said there, but, you know, you just take in the good and throw out the bad that you don't agree with, and hopefully that will help you uh, question your reality, give you a different worldview, you know? Instead of what just the establishment gives you. And it's going to be uncomfortable. A lot of the stuff that they talk about on these Google Hangouts, it can be uncomfortable. You know, but if you're solid where you're at, and you don't waver, and there's no doubt in your heart because what you believe is built on truth, then it doesn't matter what anybody says. It shouldn't sway you away from the truth. And for me, the truth has set me free because, you know, once you start once you start looking at a flat earth, you're like, wow, that's a massive deception. And then you start going down other bunny trails, and it's just like, okay, wow, this is just overwhelming. It's 3 a.m., I need to go to bed. This is just too much information. How you guys doing? Ah, oh, terrific, thanks. How was Comic-Con? It was awesome. Great. I was wondering if you guys could do me a favor, though. Um, without citing NASA or Hollywood, can you prove to me that we live on a spinning ball hurtling millions of miles through space? No. 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 <laughs> do you know that NASA and Hollywood are working together to promote that lie of the blue marble? And we don't live on in space? And we can't go to the moon or Mars? Yeah. 
I would definitely investigate that because there's a lot of CGI that NASA uses to deceive our minds into believing such propaganda. So can I can I offer you something, some information? Have an open mind. You know, it's it's new information that you may or may not agree with, but I hope it starts you in the right path. Great. Yeah, I wish I could go to the moon right now. <laughs> hey, you too. Have a good weekend. So, you know, we give her the periodicals and she wants to check out some alternative ideas and thought-provoking information. I hope it leads her down a path so that then they can lead their kids into the right direction. So that then when there is a massive deception laid on the earth, you will not be fooled. Because that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. He wants to deceive us and make us believe something that feels right, but in actuality is false. I'm trying to be a little more intentional here in the last two hours here as people come out. I just want to challenge people to understand that Hollywood and NASA are one in the same. And if you don't believe me, you know, here's what everybody's favorite captain said at one of these types of events. So, they do tell us the truth. They have to. They have to tell us the truth. Please understand that. Please understand that they have to tell us the truth because it makes their power increase over our subconscious because everybody will not believe when they tell us the truth because they'll just laugh it off. It's called duality, guys. It's called esoteric and exoteric. It's like your peace sign. If you give people the peace sign when you're doing, uh, taking a selfie or a photograph, that's the symbol for Venus. That's an occult symbol. So they tell you that it means peace, but an underlying reason of what it means, it does not mean that. It's an occult symbol. How you doing, ma'am? Good, how are you? Not too bad. Is there a way that you can uh, prove to me that we live on a spinning ball not using NASA or Hollywood? No. Do you know why you can't? You know why I can't? Because it's all CGI, man. Is it? It is, actually, yep. Yeah. Can I actually prove it to you? Absolutely. Okay, sure. Um, I love the uh, the uh, first Avengers movie. Okay. So I used to be just like everybody else here, man, and, until I kind of woke up. Alright. Yeah, so um, can you tell me which size America is supposed to be? Uh, this one. <laughs> right? I know, right? Like, yeah. The, yeah, we don't know, actually. Oh. Yeah, both of these pictures are two of multiple pictures from NASA, and all of the continents are different sizes. The oh. ocean is a different color. The greenery on each continent is different shades. And so if I was to take a picture of you today, and then, like, next week, how different do you think the pictures should be? If you didn't shave, obviously. Yeah, it should be about the same. Should be the same, right? So... Since 1972 that they've, NASA has showed us what they call the blue marble, it's all been different, man. Really? I'm, I'm being totally honest with you. Yeah. Hmm. And all of your pictures of satellites in space are also CGI. They're all actually taken from a third-person perspective. And so one would kind of question that... Uh, um, who's taking a picture of this satellite? Does this look like a real satellite? No. No. You have discernment. I mean, you've seen plenty of CGI type yeah. superhero movies. Yeah, so have I. Right? Yep. The Avengers is full of it, right? Yep. Guardians of the Galaxy. That's going to be full of CGI. Yep. But what the establishment wants is for us to meld science fiction and science together so that we can't discern what's real and what's fake. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. Okay. You're familiar with what the ISS is? Mm hmm. Okay. Have you ever watched the ISS live on YouTube? 
Oh, uh, no, I have not. Okay. If you're bored this weekend, right? I mean, it's going to be nice out, so I don't know how, how much you want to stay inside, but if you just YouTube ISS Live in Space, they have like five or six official channels, and I will give you a beer for each satellite that you see in a 30-minute period. How, many, how confident do you think I am that you're going to be buying me a lot of beer? I guess you're pretty confident. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> considering that there are no satellites during that live stream. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So, and, and the establishment tells us that we have 2,300 man-made satellites orbiting, quote, orbiting Earth right now. So let me give you a picture of, of what that might mean. Um, Earth is a beehive, Okay. <laughs> And if you have that hanging on a tree and you poke or prod that beehive, what, what happens? Bees come out. A bunch of bees will come out, right? Mm -hmm. And so the bees are satellites and the beehive is Earth. That's the visual that they tell us online. Wait, if, you, if you Google satellites in space, that's an example that they'll give us, that that's how many satellites are orbiting Earth. But again, I just told you that if you watch a 30-minute or one-hour segment of the stream of ISS, you won't see one satellite during that entire period. Do you not believe that the satellites are fast if are traveling too fast to be seen? Uh, they're all CGI, man. Um, if you believe that this is a real satellite, then you believe that Guardians of the Galaxy is real. If that makes sense. Because it's all CGI, man. Are you saying that there aren't actually as many satellites in the atmosphere as they're saying? I'm saying that there aren't zero satellites. There are no satellites? Yes, sir. So the Hubble Space Telescope isn't a thing? Nope. nope. Well, where, do, where do they get all those pictures? Okay, those pictures are CGI. So please use discernment to when you look at those pictures that they are CGI, 100%. Okay. And if an amateur uses his own satellite or her own um telescope to look at quote Jupiter all it is is a light in the sky and it's a unique light that just has some stripes in it okay we can't get any clearer picture until NASA gives us a CGI picture of Jupiter does that make sense I'm still not entirely why is, is your argument saying that all of these pictures are CGI I don't, I don't quite understand why you don't believe that, this, that there are actually satellites. Yeah. Do, you, do you believe that Russia and the United States were never in a space race and that none of these satellites were ever actually yep. launched? Yep. The reason why the quote space race happened is because they wanted a reason to go into low earth orbit and deceive your eyes and your mind that we live on a blue marble. And so, if, have you ever been on an airplane before? I have. Okay. So picture yourself in an airplane cabin, okay, and you got all the windows on each side, right? Everybody wants the window seat, right? So it's just us three in the airplane. Let's cover all those windows, okay, so it's completely black in the cabin, okay? Let's take one of those pieces of paper off of one of the windows. Let's put a transparency of the blue marble in front of that window. Step back about 20 feet and tell everybody that we're 130,000 miles away from Earth. Do you think that's a good illustration of how they deceived us in believing that they went to the moon? I do not think that's a good illustration. Okay, analogy. well that's my opinion, but I would check it out because that's actually what NASA did. They blacked out the inside of the capsule when they were actually on low Earth orbit. Okay. And you think these astronauts did this? Oh yeah. Did you know that all of them but one are Freemasons? That's a secret society. Ah, uh, Freemasons. Yeah. I'm not even going to get into Hey, hey, that's Excuse cool, me. man. But NASA is a fraud, man. And okay. it's all CGI. Thank you for that information. Not a problem, man. But if you ridicule before investigating, that's ignorance. Oh, I'm not, I'm not ridiculing. I'm okay. just walking away. Awesome. So, that's an illustration of how they faked us doing moon landing. Yeah. So, um, I can also cite you a Newsweek article from 2015 that says, all communication done on Earth is through fiber optics and ground towers. 99%. The other 1% is landlines. So what they do is, for example, between America and Europe, they have undersea ground fiber optic cables, right? Okay, so let's say that this is 
an illustration of the ocean, okay, and it's, this is filled with water. So the, your right side is America and the left side is Europe. That's all fiber optics in between us. So all the communication between us and Europe is undersea cables. Does that make sense? No, it really does. It's just the cell phones just use satellite communication, not, not satellite sky, but the towers. It does use towers. Yeah. Yep. And also NASA has a massive balloon program. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I'm not. It's actually bigger than their shuttle program. And they've just released in New Zealand on April 25th a football sized balloon that may or may not have communication properties to it. Oh. Yeah. So those lights in the sky that you see blinking that a majority of people would say are satellites mm -hmm. may or may not be blimps or balloons. Or possibly drones now. I can believe the drones. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So. And if you were to, for example, between America and Europe, how they have undersea cables, right? Yep. In your mind, imagine getting rid of the ocean. Okay. Okay? And then raising that, the crevasse, up to sea level, you know, so we could just walk right across it, and it's as flat as Kentucky, for example. With that illustration, where would the ground fiber optics be? Would they be on the ground? You know, like from the seabed, and you raise the... Probably then, yeah. Yeah. So would that be considered... Would that still be considered intercontinental communication? Or would that just be part of Earth? Part of Earth. Part of Earth, yeah. So the only thing that really separates us from Europe is water. And that's how people get the concept of international travel. Mm -hmm. Could I, Is that a proper illustration to an extent? To an extent, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if you travel to Canada, technically it's still international, but a lot of people could say, yeah, it's kind of domestic. Yeah. You know, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I'm just trying to get a better understanding of how to kind of, you know, present that illustration. Yeah. So, that does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people say, "Who? well, what about GPS? Well, on the top of the IDS tower is a massive antenna. Okay, and a lot of that communication that comes from the IDS tower is line of sight communication. So another antenna has to be able to see that tower to be able to communicate with it, right? And so Verizon, your AT&Ts, and your Sprints, when buildings or hills or mountains obstruct the view of other antennae, that's called pointing antennae, P-O-Y-N-T-I-N-G. Okay, that's for your 3G and 4G communications. Okay. Yeah. And so when you're talking about GPS, which is ground positioning system, not global, because in the 1970s it was changed. So the, industri the military industrial complex just put a new sticker on it, right? Yeah. So instead of calling it LAN, they call it GPS. And so people say, well, what about myself? You're using a wireless phone right now to stream Facebook Live. And I'm like, yeah, but it's talking to other cell phone towers. Because when you're roaming, yeah. you're, you're renting, quote, renting a Verizon tower even though you have Sprint. Does that make sense? That makes sense yeah. yeah, so with that being said, GPS works with three or four towers communicating together to triangulate your position on Earth. So... And what do I know? <laughs> you know, I'm just a guy mm -hmm. who's just really passionate about waking people up and uh, leading them to an alternative view that NASA's lying to us. Okay. And they get $52 million a day. Yeah, that's nice. Right, <laughs> to give us this. CGI images. Yeah. CGI images. So, us living on a globe is a massive deception. And in my opinion, they're going to use that because people believe in space, Planet X, Nibiru, aliens, which isn't real. Yeah. So if you understand that we don't live on a blue marble, where do we live? And if, if the planets that we see in the sky aren't real, and they're all just CGI, then aliens don't exist. Mm -hmm. Right? Just my opinion. Yeah. You know? So... So, <laughs> that we live now? Um... <clears throat> <clears throat> 
What do you think that is? Does that make sense? So this is called truth hidden in plain sight. Mm -hmm. So this is the official UN flag that they show us that we may or may not live. And it just coincidentally looks like a flat earth map. And the white around the flat earth map on your left, that's Antarctica. It may or may not be a 200 foot wall holding all the water in. Right? So a lot of people will say, well, flat earth, you're going to fall off the edge. Well, if you look into it, it's just a big sheet of ice, you know, holding all the water in. So, I mean, I really appreciate you being open yeah. and uh, just kind of hearing what I have to say. Yeah, but information to process. And yeah, and if you want, I mean, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, and I do have some information on there that right. um, I have some videos that I like and some different subscriptions that might lead you down the rabbit hole and just open-minded mm -hmm. you know you don't it might take because I've been on this uh, for about 18 months and actually like a couple months ago I took a couple months off because I was just like is this really it I mean is this really like we don't live on a blue marble if all the stuff we get is CGI, what conclusions could a person who critically thinks and separates their education and what they learn from school and what the establishment tells us on CNN and Fox News about Cassini? You know, when you see Cassini pictures by Saturn, they're all third person. So it's like, well, did they send another satellite to take a picture of Cassini? <laughs> yeah, that's... You know? So... I, just, I know it's I know it's new, and uh, I just hope that you just take it for what it's worth. And yeah, I'll definitely process it and add to my data. Sure. Yeah. What's right. your name? Russ. Russ. Joshua. Joshua. Nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah. You too, man. Really yeah. appreciate the combo. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the information. Yeah. Not a problem, appreciate man. It. Appreciate being wide, uh, open-minded. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Get more videos on you. Definitely. Page. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely take a look at them. Great, man. Really All appreciate right. it. Yeah. Have Thank a good you. weekend. And boom goes the dynamite. Hey guys. All right. Well, I think that went as well as silk on a bed. What do you think? So he can take that for what is what it's worth. Right? Yeah, just, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, steer people and put words in their mouth. Hey ladies, how you doing? I know it's funny, but if you could do me a favor so I could go home, because I've been out here for a long time and nobody can, can get me home, just answer this question. Without citing NASA or Hollywood, Prove to me we live on a spinning ball flying millions of miles through space. You can't. Why can't you? Because NASA gives us CGI, that's why. All of the images of space that NASA gives us, if you use your discernment, is CGI. And it's not real. We've never been to the moon and we can't go to Mars. And the stars that you see in the sky are just lights. They're not physical objects that can be landed on. Okay. So, something to think about. If we don't live on a spinning ball, we may or may not live on a flat earth. Okay. So, research that please, flat earth, okay? I'm serious, I wouldn't be out here for the last six hours if I didn't, wasn't very confident in what I'm telling you. You have a beautiful smile, okay? All right. Well, hey, appreciate it, Elliot. Just, uh, just hanging out, man. Just want people to wake up. That's all. Just got to be a little more intentional today. How you guys doing? Awesome. Have a good weekend.
All these guys are gonna get destroyed. How are we doing? Good. good, good. I was just wondering if you could do me a favor, please. I'm, I want to go home. Okay, I've been here for a couple hours, and I can't get anybody without citing NASA or Hollywood prove that we live on a spinning ball. Um, no? I don't know. You know that NASA only gives us CGI images of space and yeah, satellites? I don't know. Space isn't real. I actually, I do believe space is real. Why? But I just told you to s tell me that space is real without citing NASA or Hollywood. Where do you get your ideas of space from? The sky. Well, the sky, right? But what if those were just lights in the sky? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I have a thing for the moon. So. Yeah, but it's just a light in the sky. Do you believe that we landed on the moon? Yes. And what proof do you have not citing NASA? Just the videos of John Glenn. Right. Did you know that he's part of secret society to s deceive your mind? No. Yeah. I believe in this. I know. Please wake up. How you guys doing? Good. Right here. You gonna see Guardians of the Galaxy? I want to. Yeah? yeah? Do you believe in outer space? Yeah. Yeah, it's not real, bud. Please wake up. It's about as real as Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. How you guys doing? Good. Good, good. Say, I'm trying to go home. I was wondering if you could answer a question for me. I've been out here for a couple hours. Um, without using NASA or Hollywood, could you prove to me that we live on a spinning ball? Well, on a spinning ball or in a spinning ball? On a spinning ball, hurtling billions of miles through space with no direction at all. The, uh, simply because I am grounded on the ground, gravity. It's right. Force. So you believe in God? Space, so yeah. Do you believe in God? Thanks for talking, buddy. Because God is just as real as gravity, sir. Absolutely. I'm not arguing. Okay. Well, all right. Again, I know, bud. It's not real, man. Outer space is as real as Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. They're lying to us. It's all CGI, man. Blew that kid's mind. But, 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 no! Kasplat. All over the sidewalk. That's what we gotta do. We just gotta wake people up to the illusions. It's not real, man. Look, he tells you it's not real, right here. Science and science fiction are essentially the same thing. Bill Shatner, Captain Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Captain's Log, Stargate 17452.1. We're on a deserted island here, folks. The convention center. Uh, Spock, can you help me please prove to these people that we don't live on a spinning ball? You know that uh, Bill Nye? He made his ears look like Spock from Star Trek. Like he, he actually went through the whole process of looking like Spock. And that's why people love him so much. People don't know that. Like they don't know why they like him so much. But because we all grew up with Star Trek, he's a familiar face. How you doing, ladies? Good, good. Where y'all going? Comic Con. No. Oh. My daughter's in a dance competition. Oh, she is. Great. Well, I hope she does well. Thank you. Yeah. Captain's log. Stardate lies, lies, lies. Captain's log. Lies, lies, lies. <sighs> okay. Let's 
see what these ladies can do. See if they can answer this question so I can go home. How'd y'all do? Pretty good. Hey, right on. Did you get like a medal or a first place? Uh, are at 9, 9.30. Oh, so you come back and... Yeah. Oh, okay. Right on. I've been out here for a while. I was just wondering if you could answer a question for me. Uh, just real sure. quick. I, I just want to go home. I'm sorry. Um, without citing NASA or Hollywood, can you prove to me we live on a spinning ball hurtling billions of miles through space? Um, well, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we, the, the, the uh, mm -hmm. clouds are moving. They are moving, but that's, <laughs> I know. Did you know that there may or may not be more evidence that we live on a flat plane than a spinning ball? Did you know that? No. Yeah, because if I know that you went to public school, I went to school here too. I graduated in Buffalo, okay? But science makes you distrust your natural senses by explaining everything away that makes sense to us using gravity. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because, for example, if you ever been to the beach before? Yeah. Okay, and you see the ocean and stuff? Have you taken a picture of that horizon? Yeah. Okay. I challenge you tonight or this weekend, if you think about it, go home, grab that picture, put it on your monitor, okay? Get a okay. ruler and line the ruler up with the horizon. Right. Okay? I will, I will bet you your favorite drink for each centimeter, it's off. Okay, so if it's off by seven centimeters and there's a curve, I'll buy you seven coffees. Does that make sense? Yeah. How confident do you think you're going to be buying me seven coffees? Uh, you think I'm pretty confident that I'm not going to buy you any yeah, drinks? Because it's a horizon. That's why we call it the horizon, because it's horizontal. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, um, the human eye, let's say, for example, can see about three miles away. Mm -hmm. So when you see a, quote, ship go over the horizon, if you have, like, your camera a super zoom telescope or something, you can actually bring that object back into focus. And then if it goes over the quote horizon again and you get a more powerful telescope, you can do it again and do it again. And you can see for about 150 miles. So after 150 miles, don't you think that something should eventually go over the horizon? Yeah. But it doesn't. Because water doesn't curve. I mean, I know it's new information, it's kind of like, why is this guy telling us this? But <laughs> I really care about you guys. We're being deceived by NASA that we live on a ball and we really don't. And all the information that NASA gives us is CGI. So if you're going to see Guardians of the Galaxy this weekend, right, they, yeah. they use massive amounts of CGI in it, right? And it may look real, but they use that same technology to deceive your mind to make you believe that we live on a spinny ball. So, I have some like information. I do have a YouTube channel. I do this daily. Okay. I really encourage you just to have an open mind. Try to put your education that you have to the side for just a couple hours and just investigate that idea okay. that we may or may not live on a flat earth, okay? Okay. <laughs> Great, ladies. Have a good weekend. Thanks, you too. Thanks for stopping and listening. And they're done. Their life will never be the same. I hate to ruin people's lives, but... NASA ruined mine, so it's time to ruin theirs. $52 million in my rear end. You kidding me? $50 million! 52. Right? Just three... That's all I need. Three minutes. I try to be as, um, how do I say, pronounce properly so that uh, they can keep up. But, uh, look at this guy. If you need a ride in Minneapolis, this looks like fun. Just as long as he didn't eat a bucket of beans beforehand, you don't want to be downwind of that guy.
probably like it's probably like the same amount as getting a taxi to get on that thing. And boom goes the dynamite. Still got about an hour. People are gonna start funneling out. The exhibits end at eight tonight for the Comic Con. How you doing? Good man. I, I you know I'd be doing better if I could go home. Nobody's been able to answer this question for me. Maybe you can help me. Um, without citing NASA or Hollywood, can you prove to me we live on a spinning ball hurtling billions of miles through space in no direction? No. Did you know that we may or may not live on a flat earth? I know it's new information and it kind of goes against everything that we're taught here in America, but can I give you some periodicals and maybe you can just have an open mind. I know it's new information to you, but uh, maybe in the next couple months it might trigger something and pique your interest. Not a problem, man. Yeah, have a good rest of your day. Have a good time in there. Yep. right there another thing <clears throat> excuse me another thing too to think about guys when the sun is setting and there's clouds um, you can see proof that the sun is closer than 93 million miles away how you can tell that is when the sun is peering through the clouds it will go off at two different angles on the left and the right side if the sun was further away like they tell us all of those rays coming through the clouds should be at 90 degree angles. Does that make sense? So think of it as, I don't know, hmm, a pyramid with a light at the top of it. Not anything like your currency that you have right now, like a dollar bill. Not at all like that. Not at all like an all-seeing eye. But just for argument's sake, let's use that as an illustration. So think of a pyramid and the sun is at the top of it. The rays coming to the left and to the right at about 45 degree angles prove that the sun is closer, maybe three or four thousand miles away. And it may or may not be 30 to 40 miles in diameter. When they tell you that the sun just so happens to be coincidentally the same size as the moon, and it's just, we're just a speck, Google that. Neil deGrasse Tyson, Spec. Okay? Or, what's that Asian guy's name who's another mainstream scientist? Maku? I can't get that guy's name right. I was here, I hear it just about every day because I watch establishment agenda so I can understand what they're doing, but just type that in. Type in Neil deGrasse Tyson, Spec. And you'll hear them all telling us that we are a Spec. And that it's just a coincidence that the sun and the moon are the same size. No. That's a deception, and that's a lie. And if you think it's okay to be lied to, even just to spare your feelings, message me so we can have a dialogue. Or I can get Mo, Curly, Curly and Larry to bap you on the head and wake you up. Because nobody wants to be lied to, even if it's just a white lie. Why would anybody want to be lied to? That's not kosher. So we're having, we're having some good traffic coming through here. I think, I think presenting them with that question is good. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was released today. So if you want to check that out to understand propaganda from the establishment about space, check it out. If you want to buy me a movie ticket to go see it, I'll go, but I certainly would never pay. Yep, Michiao Kaku. There you go. He's a fraud. He's good. He's good. Um, he's a good spokesman, though. I actually. Uh, created a new playlist on my YouTube channel called Scientism 
and he explains for about an hour how the universe universe works. You know, good for him. I'm glad that he was able to explain how to deceive people's minds by using a language called mathematics and numbers, which was created to be used to prove science and math. I know that's hard to believe that math is a language and that it was created to deceive your mind into believing that you can use algorithms and mathematic equations to tell us how far away the sun is and how far away Jupiter is, which is unbelievable. Hey, there's the moon. The moon is at half phase right now, so riddle me this, Batman. If the moon is at half phase, shouldn't the moon have like a little, a little like dip in the middle? You know, like a crescent moon shows that. A lot of people use that as an example that the earth or whatever is in front of the moon, so it creates the crescent. But when it's at a half moon, it's just a straight 90 degree angle. So is, does the earth just magically become like half? I don't know. It's just a thought. Just speaking out loud. Like the song, speaking out loud. How you doing? <clears throat> I thought about going back to the Skyway, but it's really nice out now. The wind has died down a little bit. Did you know that the sun may or may not influence wind? Something to think about. When it gets dark out, the wind usually dies down, and when it's light out, there's usually wind. Really love somebody to prove to me some things so I can go home. <clears throat> or don't prove it to me, because I'm having fun. You know? A lot of people just say, I don't know. You're like, hey, me, neither do I. I don't know either. That's why I'm here. <coughs> Pardon me. A little congested today. I can't wait to go to that CF thing tomorrow morning. That's going to be early. I think they start at 8, so i got to show up there at like 7.30. I want to get in there real early, because I think it goes to like 11 a.m., um, Lake Calhoun is downtown Minneapolis. We haven't been there yet. We've been to Loring Park a couple times. Loring Park is a popular lake landmark here in downtown Minneapolis, but I know, right? That's where you get your Copernicus and, you know, uh, all these other, quote, mathematicians. And it goes back to what I was talking about with simulation theory a couple of days ago. Uh, I think that video is titled, There Are No Atheists on Flat Earth. So check that out. I kind of go into a rant about simulation theory and how they use D-Wave computer, supercomputer, and CERN to put in their theories of relativity, gravity, and all these other things. And they put put their theories into a supercomputer because since they believe we live in a simulation they think that when they press enter on the computer after they enter in their equations it will play out their theories as real so then it, it, it they're basically trying to prove their theories by using a computer so hey ladies how you doing good good I'm terrific, thanks. It's a nice day out. And, uh... So, I think that that's how they may or may not simulate a fake alien invasion. Because chemtrails may or may not be used as a 
conduit to spray our skies and create a massive projection screen so that ground towers that have the capability to project images in the sky look real. If you haven't YouTubed or Googled this, City in the Sky, I think it was in China a couple years ago, recently, and uh, a couple of people took a picture of what appears to be a city floating above China. And that's just an example of what, they, what they're trying to do. They're trying to get that information out there. Conspiracy, whoa, it's crazy. Uh. You know, but they want to get public reaction. They do use us as guinea pigs to test out their theories and their different agenda. And once you see that, go down the rabbit hole of Project Bluebeam. They admit in some documents that they need to create something bigger than Pearl Harbor. And guess what happened? 9-11. So they'll create something that's bigger than 9-11. Right? And that's why people love illusionists. You know, like your David Blaine's and your... What's that other guy? Chris Angels. You know, they're illusionists. They're jinns. I think that they're demonically possessed, personally. That's why they're that's how they're able to do such manifestations in our reality, because they are possessed by demonic entities. And so they go into a trance-like state. And they are part of the occult. Yeah, ELF waves is big too. Voice to skull. Google that, voice to skull. That's how they would use Project Bluebeam. Um, they would have a projection of a fake alien invasion in Thailand, for example, with Buddha. And they would, in your mind, in Thai language, tell you that verbally, like you would hear it in your head, like verbatim, like you're listening to somebody speak audibly, but you don't know where the sound is coming from, and it would be right in your brain, and you would hear it audibly, as if somebody is speaking to you, and that's called voice to skull. To make you believe what you're seeing is real. How you guys doing? How was Comic-Con? Awesome. How we doing? Oh, not too bad. Can't complain. You guys from Westworld? <laughs> oh, okay. Right on. Did you guys do Comic Con or? Oh, okay. You know, I was wondering. I'm trying to go home too. Could you answer a question so I could leave? Without citing NASA or Hollywood, prove to me that we live on a spinning ball, hurtling billions of miles through space. Yep. Yeah, with your own physical eyes, right? Did you know that if you get like a P900 or a super high zoom telescope, you can actually bring that object back into focus? And you can repeat this experiment multiple times and you can see something about 150 miles away? Because water doesn't curve, man. You know, that's like Christians who use God as a reason to explain everything away. Science has given us a reason to explain everything away by using gravity. Does that make sense? That science is a religion? Are you live streaming? Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. These guys just hey, performed. So, no, Twitch is usually for video games. This is for Facebook Live. But, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Hey, no, I appreciate it, but I got some uh, information there. It's my YouTube channel. If you have an open mind, guys, I'd really love for you to check it out. Uh, it's actually about three to four thousand miles away. Circle. Yeah, that's why it gives you a pyramid shape through the clouds because it's not 93 million miles away, man. So, looked a little Sherlock Holmes on the bit. 
So hopefully they investigate that. They looked a little detective, you know, like, uh, what would that be? What time would that be? 1800s? I don't know, what do I know, right? Yep. Um, with all the GMOs, vaccines that contain mercury, check that out, that is a metal. With all the GMOs, chemtrailing, and food that we eat, by the time a child grows up to be my age in this generation, they are basically a walking antenna. So, if you're a millennial right now and you're watching this, you are, you are basically a walking antenna. And so your cell phone, your radio towers, your cell phone towers, they all emit radio waves to change your consciousness. These are adults dressed up in garb of some kind. If they, if they worked as hard to wake people up as they do to stay asleep, we'd change the world. We would change the level of frequency on this earth. How you doing, man? Good. And so, I don't know if you can see it very well, but uh, above where that guy's walking, you see that antenna directly above the awning, the pyramid-shaped awning in the middle of this shot? There's an antenna with like what looks like little metal things sticking up that are separated. That's a cell phone tower. That's what they tell us. That is an ELF antenna. That has frequencies to keep us in a docile state so that we don't wake up. If you've never seen They Live, starring Rowdy Rowdy Piper, please watch that. It's worth your time. Even if you have to rent it, it's like two or three bucks, you know, on Amazon. I don't think it's on Netflix. You have to rent it. It's one of those movies that the establishment makes you rent. Um, you can find it on YouTube, but it's at a resolution and at an a it's super zoomed in, so you just really get the audio. Um, but you can watch it if you can, you know, deal with the resolution that's going on. But... It will give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. A lot of people do say in the conspiracy community that that movie is a documentary. And Rowdy Rowdy Piper himself says that They Live was a documentary. They are among us. We do not have sunglasses or contact lenses to see the establishment, but we can see their symbolism in movies and TV and on the news. If you ever watch the news, CNN, Fox News, all that jazz, count how many times you see the number 33, 74, 93, 54, 42, It's called Gematria. It will help you understand their language. And it's kind of their way of like imprinting, yeah, we were a part of this. And then people who are in the know understand that the establishment did said event. You know? If you see names that have first and last names beginning with C, CC is 33. Right? People would rather have the establishment do things for them, think for them, provide for them, provide economic wealth, like welfare and EBT cards, Social Security, and there are people who genuinely need to use that stuff, but, again, just like the establishment, abuse the power and the situation. 
And so another thing to look into in regards to frequency and mind control. Google 432 hertz to 440 hertz music change. I, I think that's proper. I just started looking into it recently, so I think that may or may not be correct, but they change the frequency level and, if you will, the quote, beat of music to 440 hertz. So just look, look into that. Find out why they did that. Find out why the frequency level of music nowadays is changing at a rapid pace because you are a frequency. You are an antennae. Okay? You draw in energy, vibration, and it changes your mood. And they use music to give you your ideas and supplant subconsciously their ideas. So that then you are more susceptible to accepting your reality around you. And when somebody like me comes up to you, you hate me and you defend the establishment. How you guys doing? Good. Hey, can't complain. I, I actually can't complain. I'm trying to go home. Maybe you can help me go home and answer a question for me. Uh, can you prove to me not using NASA or Hollywood we live on a spinning ball? What? Prove that we live on a spinning ball not citing NASA or Hollywood. What are you doing? NASA gives us CGI images of where we live and it's all fake. Please... It is, actually. You can't travel to Mars or the moon. Space is not real. But what do I know? You know? He's a Minnesota Wild fan. The Minnesota Wild choked. Because it wasn't their time. People get angry about the Minnesota Wild losing in the playoffs. Oh, they suck. Ah. If you watch Zachary K. Hubbard's YouTube channel... I don't agree with everything that he says, but he did wake me up to the deception of sports. And if you get angry because your team loses in the playoffs, you're deceived. Sports are not real. It is for entertainment purposes only and a distraction to keep you from seeking the truth and opening your mind to the reality in which you live. It's turning numbers into words and vice versa. That's why we have the English language. English language is actually simple and it's simplified for our stupid minds to understand. So when I share King James Bible scripture with people, they say, I can't read this. Give me something in English. Well, what do you think the English language was created for? It was created to help people who are in the Comic-Con Convention Center understand a language to simplify for their minds because they're asleep. And I'm not trying to bash anybody, I'm not trying to insult, but you need to understand why the English language was created. It was created to simplify communication between humans because they are at a superior consciousness level and frequency than we are. And also because English and numbers were created interchangeably so that the establishment can communicate their language and their words to each other but keep us at a dumbed down state. How you doing? Uh, not too bad. I was I was wondering. I'm trying to go home though, and I was wondering if you could help me with a question so I can go. A question? Yeah. Without citing NASA or Hollywood, prove that we live on a spinning ball hurtling billions of miles through space. <laughs> I don't know. So I got to stay here longer. Apparently. 
Yeah. Did you know that everything NASA gives us is CGI? Nope. Yeah. Did you know what is CGI? It's a computer. Yeah, it's a computer. Yeah. So if everything like satellites in space, pictures of Earth from space, Mars, Saturn, Cassini, if all of that's CGI, what conclusion could someone come to about space? Well, I have, I have figured it out. That's why I'm here to help you understand that if everything is fake and CGI, space is not real. And NASA is a massive fraud deceiving our minds into believing that we live on a ball and not a possible flat plane. Well, it is, because you were just in there with like-minded people who believe we live on a spinning ball, and we don't. I hope you do. Research Flat Earth because we're being lied to. Okay? Thank you. Yep. That was in English. That was simple. But they don't get it. They will someday, though. I'm sure. I just hope they get it before it's too late. I hope that they're not, they're not deceived when whatever it is that's around the bend comes. Because something's coming, guys. I'm not here. I, I don't have anything else to do. Like, I don't, have, I don't have movies to watch. I watch Netflix every once in a while. Black Mirror is interesting to watch. That's a good show to watch on Netflix. That's very psychologically provoking. Um, the first episode is very interesting, and a lot of that is just predictive programming. Black Mirror. Check it out. <laughs> just trying to help you guys just be curious, you know, question what's going on around your reality. Don't trust everything you see or hear on the news and TV because it's fear-mongering. They want to keep us in fear constantly from whether it be Nibiru, aliens, asteroid, hitting Earth, EMP, nuclear weapons. It's all fear. It's all a lie. There's no reason to be afraid of them anymore. They're more f afraid of us than we should be of them. If we all gathered together, 10,000 of us, at, the state, at your state capitol, and demanded answers about why we're given CGI and not real pictures of space, yeah, you might have to miss out on your Netflix. You might have to miss that game, you know? Might not be able to watch Game 7 of the NBA p Finals, you know? If you don't think that the NBA Finals this year are going to a Game 7, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. If you believe that the Patriots are just so much better than the Atlanta Falcons in the Super Bowl, that they came back from three touchdowns down, what was it, in the fourth quarter with seven or eight minutes to go? And you think that Atlanta sucks that bad? Come on. Give me a break. They want to raise your excitement level so that you are addicted to it the next year. Same thing when I was watching Super Bowl when in Thailand at 6 a.m. Woke up to watch it because I was deceived. I didn't understand sports. Jurassic Park, are you kidding me? Blow this guy's mind. Hey, good to see you again. Have a good night. How you guys doing? Yep, space isn't real, man. Neither are dinosaurs. If you can prove to me that we live on a spinning ball not using NASA or Hollywood, I'll buy you a beer. But you can't because it's all CGI, man. NASA is lying to you and me. And I watched Russell Wilson, third down, at the one yard line, throw the ball. 
when he has the best running back in football, Skittles, could have handed it off to him. Could have handed it to Beast Mode and you threw the ball for an interception. If you don't understand that that was a scripted play, then you need to do your research, man. You need to look into it. And that's what piqued my interest about sports being fake after I saw that. I actually saw that happen, and I just threw my hands up in the air. I didn't care who won. I, don't, I didn't care, really, to be honest with you. I thought that was pretty exciting when, when they were at the one-yard line. I was just like, oh, geez, this is easy peasy. Hand the ball off to beast mode, and boom, touchdown. Basically, you win the game. But nope, he threw the ball on third down. But people believe that, you know? People believe that the sports that they've watched for decades are real. And I can't encourage you enough, guys, to look into gematria and sports. How you doing? Look at this guy, I got a question for you. How you guys doing? How was Comic Con? Hey, right on. I got a question for you. Funny you're wearing that shirt. Hey. Um let's see. If uh if you can prove to me that we live on a spinning ball, hurtling billions of miles through space, not citing NASA or Hollywood, I'll buy you guys dinner. Hmm. All right. Well, um, I've been here for a long time, and uh, you guys believe that we live on a ball? Yeah. Yeah, like science and gravity and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, did you know that everything that NASA gives us is CGI? Does that make sense? You know what CGI is, yes. right? You're gonna see this movie this weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what the establishment is trying to do is to deceive your eyes to make you believe that CGI is real by giving us CGI images of the Earth from space and satellites in space. Have you ever looked at images of Earth from space before? Mm -hmm. Okay. What do, what do they look like? Circles. They look like circles, sure, but do they look real? That's the question. I can't really say from my own personal eyes. I haven't been really up there. Okay, but... Down. Right, I, I get where you're coming from, but if if you were to get... Is this your girlfriend here? My sister. Sister, okay. Good looking sister here. Um, if you were to take a picture of your sister and send it to me and not use any CGI, right, I would believe it's a real picture, right? right? I would say, yeah, yeah, sure. Right. But if you were to Photoshop a picture of her and make her appear to be something that she's not, is that a lie? Yeah, like if I if you Photoshop her, like Photoshop her face, you know, do everything like that would distort. Yeah, so is that a deception? Yeah. I mean, sure, not the whole thing is a lie, but the picture itself. Is okay. A Did you know that NASA admits that they Photoshop pictures of Earth from space? They do. So they Photoshop images that they tell us are from outer space, and they're CGI. So, one would come to the conclusion that that is not where we live. If everything that they give us from outer space is CGI. Does that make sense? I mean, I know this is new information. Like, I went to public high school here too. You know, so I understand where you guys are coming from. This is new. But I would really challenge you guys to question what NASA is giving us. Does that make sense? Okay. I mean, it's my opinion, clearly, right? Mm -hmm. Until you, you know, obviously do your own research. But uh, have you ever watched the ISS live stream before? Can't say I have. Okay. You're familiar with what the ISS is, though, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can I challenge you with something tonight? Just to prove me wrong, and then you can mock and ridicule me. And I actually got a Facebook page and a YouTube channel. So just, you know, do, what I, do, do my suggestion here. Send me a message and say, hey, dumbass, you're wrong. I saw a satellite. But... 
live stream the ISS for about 30 to t minutes to an hour and count how many satellites you see. Okay? okay? And every satellite that you see, message me, I'll buy you a beer for each one that you see. Okay? Does that make sense? And if you don't see a satellite, you gotta buy me a beer. Just one. Cool? Alright, yeah. So just question your reality, guys. NASA gets $52 million a year, or a day, $52 million a day to give us CGI representations of what they tell us is outer space. So if you ever like Google image satellites in space, uh, like Cassini, for example, is supposed to be near Saturn. But when they show us a picture of Cassini near Saturn, it's a third person picture. Does that make sense? So who's taking a picture of Cassini looking at Saturn? Could just be an extension. I know, but are they going to send another satellite to take a picture of Cassini out in outer space, though? Does that is that? Do you think that's a good way to project it? No. No, or even to spend money. You know what I mean? Probably not. Yeah. So I appreciate you guys stopping and just kind of. Trying to open up your mind a little bit. Be open-minded, you know, because whatever I say is just my opinion until you research it yourself. Right. Cool? Appreciate you guys stopping by, though. Have a good rest of your night. Yeah, you too. Have a good night. Yeah, thanks. Question. How ironic he was wearing a question mark shirt, right? When I told him to question his reality. <laughs> Uh, Boom Ching. All right, let's see what these guys are doing. Doing a little, uh, doing a little, uh, little gymnastics. Huh? They might have gone into the see the competitions, and now they're trying to practice. Comic-Con is getting over right about now. <clears throat> it's 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Cinco de Mayo, thanks for stopping by, everybody, whether you're watching for the duration or just, you know, 30-minute intervals. I try to keep you entertained, but I don't know everything, and, you know, sometimes I just don't have much to say. I don't like to hear myself talk. But I do have information to share if you're ready for it and then you can mock and ridicule me or you can have an open mind and challenge me and look it up yourself but if you ridicule me before you actually look it up that is the height of ignorance how you doing good man you do uh, comic-con nope. oh okay nope. should be coming out here momentarily the sunset I think is around 830 tonight so still got about 20 minutes of daylight still a beautiful day here it's supposed to be just as beautiful tomorrow high of about 24 25 degrees sunny we're gonna head over to Lake Calhoun tomorrow and wake everybody up about the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation being a fraud, a scam. And I think it's probably going to be my most controversial episode because a lot of people think I don't have cystic fibrosis and I don't have a right to challenge the doctors and the establishment. But I will let everybody know I have cystic fibrosis and I do challenge the establishment. I ask them why they have $3.5 billion in their bank and I don't have a cure yet. And why they tell kids who are sitting in hospital beds right now that they're going to die before their 16th birthday. 
even to tell kids that you're going to die when you're 42. Like, right now, my life expectancy, according to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, is 42 years old. That's six years away. How dare you? You do not have a right to tell anybody when they're going to die. And you do not fearmonger anybody into taking the medication by giving a life expectancy. That is a deception and a fraud. And I'm going to let them know about it tomorrow. How dare you come into my state and propagate a fundraiser to line the pockets of the CEO of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation who gets about $700,000 a year. That's right. The CEO of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation gets $700,000 a year. To do what? To come out with some equipment called Monarch and then you put a butterfly over it. If you're not familiar with what MK Ultra Mind Control is and the Monarch program, please investigate that so you can understand where I'm coming from tomorrow. I will let people know that it is in cahoots with MK Ultra Mind Control because they because <clears throat> they have everybody at that walk under mind control believing that if they walk around Lake Calhoun a couple of times that they're going to cure cystic fibrosis, which may or may not be just a selenium dis deficiency. It may or may not be genetic. And so if you're unfamiliar with that and you do have cystic fibrosis or know somebody that does, tell them to research that. <clears throat> Let's check this guy out. How you doing? Doing well, sir. Hey, I'm doing terrific. You look like a wise man. Maybe you can answer a question for me so I can go home. Absolutely. Awesome. I'm not your fool. I'm not that wise. Oh, well, neither am I. That's why I'm standing at the corner of this street, because I don't have an education. Um, not citing NASA or Hollywood, can you prove to me that we live on a spinning ball hurtling billions of miles through space going nowhere? I cannot. Oh. But I do believe the world might be flat. Okay. Or what? it might be rectangular. Okay. Well, the mockery is interesting, considering that you are wearing a Halloween garb. Um, <laughs> have you, are you going to see Guardians of the Galaxy this weekend? Uh, probably next weekend, after the movie theaters are down. Okay. Okay. Um, do you know the difference between CGI and real, sir? I do know <coughs> that in space, if it exists, <coughs> a vacuum is soundless. So mm. I don't think those explosions and lasers would quite science out. Okay, so this quote by Bill Shatner is correct then? Science and science fiction are essentially the same thing. Does that make sense? It came from William Shatner. Yeah, but see, the thing is, is the, the establishment uses people like this to tell the truth, but then they're mocking us in the same fashion. Does that make sense? It's called duality, sir. I see. Yeah, so space is not real and we can't go to Mars, man. Do you believe that we went to the moon? Honestly, never saw it with my own two eyes. I was born in 1986. Hey, right on, man. I was born in 81, and I do question the establishment. And all of the images that NASA gives us regarding space are CGI. Mm, I see. So if one was to, you know, I don't know, do some Perry Mason investigation on such a topic, oh, 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 Perry Mason. yeah, you would, you would realize that we live possibly on a flat Earth because space is not real. That's true. But regardless yeah. of what we've been told, of what we may believe, all we have is right here. Hey, exactly, right man. Hey, right on, man. I can agree with that. Uh, would you mind? Can I? Can you hear me, humor me and uh, take some propaganda there? Ooh. That's my YouTube channel. I'm taking Very yeah. nice. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you, young Yeah, guy. and you are? Uh, Bob. Bob. Bob uh, the Brown. Bob the Brown. Hey. Kind of like Gandalf the Grey, except... I'm prettier. Hey, right on, man. I really appreciate you stopping by. Did Absolutely. you have a good time in there? Ah, too good a time. <laughs> yeah? Gotta Did... leave early before all the others, you know, make a traffic jam. Well, you won't turn because into a... I'm slightly wise. Uh, I got that. You, you won't turn into a pumpkin, though, will you? Oh, God. I wish they had far more protein in them than I do. <laughs> right on, man. Well, thank you, young man. Hey. Have yourself a safe night. You too, man. Have a good one, Bob.
you know, you're a wizard. Why don't you just, like, uh, transcend yourself to your car? This is true. Oh. Except I'm just a weird old dude in a wizard costume. Yeah, well, it's a good point. Have a good one, man. All right, Bob. Well, hope you wake up, bud. Still got the moon, which is just the light in the sky. That is not a physical object to be landed on. And it may or may not be about 3,000 to 4,000 miles away. <clears throat> Cinco de Mayo. Anybody doing anything special for Cinco de Mayo? I don't really know what there is to do. I celebrated. I had a Southwest chicken wrap. So I went Mexican on the bit. It was already pre-made. Like, it was just something I bought inside here. It was pretty decent, you know. It's pretty good. You know, can't complain. I am thirsty, though. Guy may be thirsty with his water bottle. And then, after the CF walk, I'm gonna go to the university. <clears throat> university is a really good spot. A lot of kids, a lot of open-minded kids, um, a lot of closed-minded kids. Um, if you watched yesterday's episodes, you will see that. I had an interesting conversation with a young man in a yellow shirt for a good amount of time. How you guys doing? Good. Hey, right on. How are you doing? Hey, not Camp McLean. Nice. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, though, I'm trying to go home here before the sun goes down. Could you answer a question for me? Sure. Not citing NASA or Hollywood, can you prove to me we live on a spinning ball hurtling billions of miles through space? No, I can't cite NASA or Hollywood. Oh. I can. You could. Um, did you know that everything that NASA does give us is CGI? I figured that. <coughs> Okay, so you figured it, but you still kind of sway towards living on a ball, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, can I interest you in some propaganda? Uh, it's my YouTube channel. Cool. Um, check it out. Sweet. And uh, hopefully, if you have an open mind, I know it's new information to you, um, but I do this every day, and I go to the University of Minnesota, and I just challenge people's ideas about space. Yeah. And that we may or may not live on a flat plane. All right, ma'am. So, yeah, check it out. All right. Appreciate you guys stopping. Have a good rest of your night. See you, kiddos. Bye. Bye. Please wake up. <sighs> All right. Some of you might know now, I changed my profile picture on my Facebook page. And I put a link of a song on there. Check it out. It's a song that I hum quite a bit. I have, I've had this song stuck in my head for like two weeks now. It's pretty fun. So, just uh, hanging out. Still got about 20 more minutes to go. I think some people are coming this way. You know, some people might go down that way. But, you know, we're just... Uh, Letting people come to me, being a little bit more intentional towards the end. I think that's kind of a good plan. Is is the first half let people come to me, and then the second half go to them. Tomorrow there'll be a lot of that, especially at the university. There's a lot of people at the park hanging out, laying down. You know what I could do is I could probably do the Lake Calhoun bit for a couple of hours and then hang out down there and then do like the last three hours or so at the university because I haven't been to Lake Calhoun yet and they have, it's a big lake so after the event 
I could just hang out and catch people while they're relaxing outside and approach them and challenge their worldview about the lies that we live on a spinning ball. <coughs> so if you can cite, not using NASA or Hollywood, your interpretation of what outer space is, please. Cause that's the general consensus. These girls are wearing Star Wars. I gotta hit these girls. Hey, ladies, how you doing? Good. How are you? Uh, you know, I'm not really doing all that great, to be honest with you. I'm sorry. I've been out here for a couple hours, and I'm just kind of trying to get somebody to answer a question for me so I can go home. Okay. The question is, without citing NASA or Hollywood, can you prove that we live on a spinning ball hurtling billions of miles through space? With no, yeah. No, nope. I mean you're wearing a Star Wars shirt, so like fantasy it. it is fantasy. But do you believe that we could ever go to Mars? Like, is there, is Mars a physical object that we can land on if given an obscene amount of money? I, yeah, that's honestly yeah, not that's that I know. Really study or, yeah, okay. I about, so. Um, what about the moon landing? That's, I'm not gonna. Be Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it is just a light in the sky. It's not a physical object that can be landed on if you actually kind of just look into it. But everything that NASA gives us regarding space is CGI. Did you know that? <laughs> I do think I want to have this conversation. I know it's going to destroy your worldview about Star Wars. I don't like stuff like that anymore because it's not real. And space is not something that we can do. No, we actually just know. Yeah, no, we know that Star Wars is definitely just a movie. But yeah. it's definitely exists in two separate realms. But right, yeah, like yeah. this, like Bill Shatner says. Do you know what he said? <laughs> I think it I meant mean, the, yeah, more yeah. like a, the way people enjoy it. And the way no, it. he's actually being very serious here. It's called duality. Okay, so he tells us the truth, but because everybody believes we live on a spinning ball, nobody will believe it. Does that make sense? Because he tells us the truth that we don't live on a spinning ball. And that science and science fiction like Star Wars and Star Trek are not real possibilities. I, mean, I don't necessarily think these are real possibilities. No, but do you believe that we live in a ball? Like a globe, a globular water ball in space? Yeah, I pretty much think that. Okay. From NASA, right? I just think from what I've studied, I want to, yeah. Sure. Could I challenge you with something? I mean, I know this is new information to you, and it may it's not make a lot of sense. It's just not. But I do have a, a, a YouTube channel. No, I think I'm good. I definitely yeah. won't look into it. I, if I okay. Do so, yeah. so, so flat Earth. The concept of us living on a flat Earth is like blasphemy to you, or? It's not blasphemy, but it's just not something I, just, I subscribe to at the time. I think that, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. Have you, so, do you know that the flat Earth con community right now? is becoming incredibly large right now because we understand that NASA is lying to us and they take 52 million dollars I mean, a day from us but it's not a time, so. but science is a belief ma'am and so is gravity yeah they all are yeah, and I, I mean, think what you are believing in and what you're focusing on is really awesome we do honestly have to go We're I totally get it yep so, yeah you, research uh, flat earth okay, okay. yep all right. bye <clears throat> See, they say that, but they know if they research it, they can't wear that t-shirt anymore. This is what I'm wearing. This is the t-shirt I'm wearing. Spaced out! Because you have to be to believe in space, right? You gotta be to believe that that is something that we can land on. How you doing, gentlemen? Good, thank you. Right on. Do you know that NASA gives us CGI images from outer space? Okay, did you know that we may or may not live on a flat Earth and not a globe? <clears throat> and gravity is not real, sir? Alright, just had to hit those guys real hard. Mm -hmm. Oh, what is this guy doing?
Give me a break. I gotta go over there. Don't get hit by a car, huh? Catch these guys. <laughs> these are adults. We both go for the Yeah, for sure. You did right. That was me. <laughs> How you doing, Captain? Good. Hey, right on, man. Since you're American, I was wondering if you could answer me a question. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to go home, but nobody's been able to give me an illustration not citing NASA or Hollywood that we live on a spinning ball hurtling millions of miles through space. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so not citing NASA or Hollywood prove that we live on a globe. Have you looked at Google? Um, the math works out. The math, which is a language which they teach us as a language. But then you can use it to make predictions and those predictions come true. Yep, so if the foundation of an algorithm was written before you or I were born and then they teach that in school for it to equal what it is that they contrive as the result that they want you to believe, that's a language, man. You got me. I know, I just... You say, based on personal experience, I can fly. <laughs> I shot into space and saw the Earth is globes. So. Yeah, but it's not, man. It actually may or may not be flat. Cool. Well, we'll let you live in the Stone Age. Well, it's not the Stone Age, man. They actually... Can I give you my uh, YouTube channel? And with Absolutely. An, with an open yeah. mind, you may or may not uh, understand, or just research it, look into it. Sure, we will do. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Cheers. Yeah, have a good one. Those are adults, dressed up as children, and that's why this country is under severe mind control. If those guys put as much effort into rising up against the establishment as they do dressing up like 12-year-old boys in Batman suits, we would have taken this country over a long time ago. But, maybe we will on July 4th, I would, I brought this up, ironically, in front of the Wells Fargo building yesterday. How you guys doing? Good, good. I was in front of the Wells Fargo building in St. Paul, Minnesota, and I suggested that we take, as Americans, 70% of our money out of the bank on July 4th and hang on to it for a couple days and claim our independence from the establishment and the banks so that they stop killing people overseas and taking our money and spending it on CGI yep it will cause some friction but we need to stop living in a fantasy world because when your money's in the bank they use that money to invest it into other things like I don't know propagating agendas overseas us being the bad guy all the time and I'm just tired of it how y'all doing it's quite the chalice you got there I'm doing great man um, uh, but I am 
trying to go home, and I got to stay here until somebody can answer me this question. Not citing NASA or Hollywood, can you prove that we live on a spinning ball hurtling billions of miles through space? Mm, if I had listened to my physics teachers yeah. more than probably... Yeah, if I would have, I probably wouldn't be standing here at the corner trying to prove that we don't live on a globe. And that everything that NASA gives us is CGI, like images of Earth from space, and satellites in space. Hey, well, that's why I'm here, man. Someday you'll understand why I'm here. But today is not your time. And if we collected all of our money and took it out of the banks, they would have no control. They would lose their power. How you doing, sir? <clears throat> Another uh, quick little tidbit about the establishment and the paper that they print off and call it currency. How's it going, man? What's hey, not a whole lot. I was wondering if you can possibly answer a question for me so I can go home. Sure, what's it? Yeah, um, just trying to find out if somebody can help me site not using NASA or Hollywood that we don't live on a globe. Are you asking for the disproof that the world is spherical? Yes. Okay. Well, I, no, I'm sorry. To, have you ever been to the ocean? Maybe I maybe I said that wrong. Yeah, so pr try to try to show me not using NASA or Hollywood that we do live on a ball. There you go. It's been a long day, man. No worries. Yeah. Have you ever been to the ocean? I have, yep. So when a, a ship mm -hmm. goes far out to sea, sure. how does it disappear? Uh, perspective. Perspective. What yep. do you mean? Um, I mean, like, the human eye can see about three miles. Okay. Okay. And if you were to grab a telescope that has a super zoom to it, uh -huh. you can actually bring that object back into focus. Okay. And you can actually keep doing that for about 150 miles. And what happens after 150 miles? Well, we don't, as a civilian, we're not able to have the technology to zoom that object back into focus. And after 150 miles, there should be a significant curve, and there's not. Okay, so then, if the answer you seek lies as to whether, because if you could find the curve, you would prove that the Earth is spherical, right? Yeah, but what if you can't find the curve, and then and what? And you're asking as a civilian to another civilian. Yeah. I think your question should lie with someone above a civilian. Yeah, but... Well, I, unfortunately, am only a civilian. I know, but they did tell us in school, right, that we live on a globe. Yep. And that the Earth is curved and gravity and all that jazz, right? Spherical, yeah. Sure. But they kind of allow us to distrust our common senses that we do live on a flat plane and not a ball. Because then they use gravity to explain everything away. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean... If you kind of do a little bit of research and you start following the white rabbit, you'll see that NASA gives us CGI of all of the images from outer space. Satellites, Earth from, the, Earth from space, mm -hmm. Cassini looking at Saturn and all that stuff. That's all CGI, man. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. So if everything's CGI that NASA gives us regarding outer space, what conclusions could somebody come to? Strong enough telescope, I guess. Well, I mean, but but we're we're relying on NASA's, you know, as an establishment, right? Yeah. To give us honest answers about where we live. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if I was to take a picture of you, and I was to CGI it and like Photoshop it and then send it to your mom, and be like, yeah, this is what your son looks like. It, do you think I'm lying to her? Do you think that's a deception? If I Photoshop a picture of you and I send it to her? Well, depends on what you think I look like. Well, right now, right? Oh, yeah. You know, so if, I, if, if NASA tells us that the pictures from space of the Earth are Photoshopped, yep. what conclusions do you think somebody could come to with that being said? Hmm. Well, it depends how much trust you have in fellow man, I guess. Well, I don't trust the establishment, so... What's the establishment made out of? Uh, humans. 
Yeah, which are greedy, and they don't like us, and they want to lie to us. That sounds like a distrust on your end, not on mine. Well, I mean, I guess if you want to believe CGI is real... I don't think I believe that. I think I believe in fellow humans, though. Okay, could I give you, interest you in some propaganda, and maybe you could have an open mind? Propaganda? Yeah, just sure. check out it's my YouTube channel, you know. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, appreciate it, man. I spend a lot of time on YouTube. I'll check you out. Right on, man. Thanks a lot. Have a good weekend. You too. Have a good night. Thanks, man. You too. <clears throat> oh, really? It's curved, huh? Well, I'm looking at the moon, and it's about half... And that is not a curve, man. That looks like a straight line from the top of the moon to the bottom. So, I don't really know what moon you're looking at. But when it's a half moon, dude, it's a straight line. So, the moon is not a physical object to be landed on. It is its own light. So, I would really appreciate it if you could try to just look into that a little bit. Um, if you go on my YouTube channel, I have a playlist of scientism. I just came, I just started it a couple days ago. It's got about 25 or 26 videos. And what somebody does during this two hour long presentation is they are showing the moon super zoomed with a telescope. Okay, so the entire moon is covering the screen. During that entire two-hour presentation, at no point do you see any black spots fly by the moon in between you and the moon. Okay, if that makes sense. So there are no satellites that fly by. So you would figure that during a two-hour look at the moon, we would see at least one satellite fly by the moon between the camera and the moon. But that doesn't happen. I mean, come on, you gotta critically think about this stuff. <clears throat> no, I've never seen a moon. I'm 36 years old. And the moon, this is actually the first time I'm looking at the moon with the camera. So, um, I actually don't even know what the moon looks like up close. One thing that's funny about the moon is all of the quote craters from, quote, asteroids and or meteorites are at 90 degree angles. Okay? So if the Earth is significantly bigger than the moon and its, quote, gravitational pull is stronger than the moon, right? It should. You know, the moon should not have an atmosphere because it's just a desolate desert, right? So it doesn't really have gravity. So how is it that any asteroid or meteor would fly into the moon and not be sucked in by Earth's gravitational pull? Because those, those asteroids or meteors have to be significantly small, right, to make that, that size because the moon isn't very big, right? So just explain to me how is it that m over the billions of years of asteroids, you know, hitting the moon, right? Why isn't there a two-mile stretch mark of an asteroid bouncing off the moon, right? They're all at 90-degree angles, man. They're all at 90-degree angles. So there are, no, there are no asteroids or meteors that hit the moon. It's just a light in the sky the Earth's gravitational pull would suck in any meteors or asteroids that size because the, the moon is, but what, like, let's say five to four times smaller. So, you know, even if an asteroid or a meteor was, you know, even a, a half a mile wide or something, Earth's gravitational pull would draw that in. Unless they're going through the Earth, which makes sense, right? An asteroid or meteor would go through the Earth and hit the moon, right? What a coincidence. I mean, I'm just trying to help you critically think, you know, maybe it's something that you never thought of. I never thought about it until a couple months ago. 
But I, I was introduced that thought, and I was like, huh, that is interesting, that all of the meteor, all of the craters on the moon are 90 degree angles. There's no two mile gash or stretch mark to show that any asteroid or meteor kind of just like clipped it or, you know, they're all perfect 90 degree angles. So, and if you want to believe that the Earth casts a shadow on the moon, that's your opinion. That's totally your right to believe that. Um, I would just suggest looking into other alternative means. Um, there may or may not be a black moon or a black, uh, some kind of a, like a dark dark moon. A lot of some people think like a dark moon or something like that that casts that shadow. Um, even most people who are in the scientific community cannot explain how the sun and the moon can be right next to each other, you know, <laughs> right? Considering that the sun would be behind the moon, but, but the front of the moon is lit. That doesn't even make any sense, so. Um, I've been here for long enough. It's coming up on 8.30. Sun's coming down, so there's really not a whole lot of good that can happen after dark, so I appreciate everybody stopping by. Hey guys, Joshua here. Um, we're hitting the streets tomorrow early, Lake Calhoun, Cystic Fibrosis Walk. Probably, I think it starts at 8. So it's going to be off top, obviously, but I do have cystic fibrosis, and I'm going to let everybody know that the CFF Foundation is a fraud. In a lie and hit the streets. We're going to go to the University of Minnesota afterwards, maybe. Um, we'll just kind of see how the day goes, but it's supposed to be beautiful. And I hope to see you guys all then. Have a good night. Happy Cinco de Mayo!